beached things, otherwise known as a BT or the BTs, are as their nickname suggests, beings or supposed entities that are beached, in a state of limbo between life and death. They are one of the key results of the Death Stranding and have played an important role in its progression. They serve as a main obstacle in the world of Death Stranding and an ever-present danger to every living thing. A BT is essentially the soul of a human being that has become stranded on the limbo. This limbo dimension is better known as the beach, a space where the car or the soul goes before moving on to the afterlife. In regular times the car would pass through the beach and move on to the afterlife. However, during the events of the Death Stranding, those who die and their cars move onto the beach cannot move any further and become stuck or stranded. This car then tries to find its ha, or the body it once inhabited. If the car is allowed to move back from the beach and discover its ha, then the two will merge and create an antimatter deformed body of the soul in the real world that is connected to the beach via an umbilical cord. This makes a BT extremely dangerous, as if the BT were to ever contact a living thing, they would generate what is known as a void out. Void outs are a collision between regular matter and antimatter, leading to the complete annihilation of both forms of matter, and resulting in explosions that can scale enough to wipe out entire cities. While the BTs would appear to be hostile in nature, given their destructive capabilities, they are simply stranded and lost souls of real people that died during the progression of the Death Stranding and are now trapped, alone and without connection to other living things. It is this that drives them to attempt to touch and to make contact with a living creature, not out of anarchy but in hopes that they might make a connection with the living once again. Sadly, every time they attempt this, it only results in more destruction, death, and disconnect. As stated, BTs generate when someone dies during the Death Stranding, however to avoid them becoming a BT, the Ha must be destroyed before the car attempts to return to it. The simplest and most effective way to do this is to cremate the body of the deceased. This destroys the Ha and keeps the car either trapped on the beach or possibly allows the car to move on to the afterlife. Of this fact we are not certain. Normal human BTs are basically invisible for the regular person, and by the time you know a BT is there, it is generally too late. As a regular human, a good indication that a BT is nearby is the presence of timefall. However, this is not always the case, and if chiral levels are high enough in a particular area, BTs will also be present. Once a BT has noticed uh, your presence, it will move close to the ground, and as it searches for you, a collection of tar-filled handprints will appear following its path of movement. For a normal human, the only real way to notice a BT before running into it is to use an Udra deck, attached to a BB unit. This device is responsive to the antimatter that the BTs are composed of, and so is able to point in the direction of the closest BT, giving warning to how close it is and at what danger level you are. The special dooms form of humans generally all have a heightened ability to see and or sense BTs. However, possession of a BB and Udra deck help to bolster these senses even further. EEs or extinction entities are capable of not only seeing BTs but even controlling them. An EE is capable of giving this ability to Doom's humans if they so desire, like in the case of Amelie and Higgs. If a BT is incapable of capturing you and making sufficient contact with you, multiple BTs will generate a tar belt, dragging you to the centre to isolate you from your surroundings, and then all these BTs will coalesce into a single, gigantic BT known as a catcher. These catchers are large and can take many forms. They are extremely difficult to survive. Only high level dooms or very extremely skilled or lucky individuals are able to defeat these uh, things, such as Sam Bridges, who to our current knowledge is the only known case 
of a number of catches being defeated. The BTs, as stated, first arrived and marked the beginning of the events known as the Death Stranding. Spoilers for the story of the game, but it was eventually explained to us through Amelie that she was an extinction entity and was responsible for bringing the Death Stranding early before its time, likely through the creation of the Bridge Babies. The creation of the first Bridge Babies coincided with the first appearance of a BT, and subsequently the first Void Out. It is likely that the creation of a BB, a tool used for opening a gateway to the beach, was what brought the Death Stranding as the natural order of life and death had been upset and now the cars of humanity were being stranded in the dimension of limbo, otherwise known as the beach, and being rejected to the world of the living. In defeating a BT, a few interesting things will occur. The antimatter that once made up the entity will form into chirelium deposits. The car of the BT will then dissipate as it travels back to the beach, and then forward finally onto the afterlife, presumably. This can be done in a number of ways. By cutting a BT's umbilical cord, you sever its final connection to the living world and allow it to move freely onto the afterlife. Weapons filled with Sandbridge's blood, such as hematic grenades or bullet casings, are also capable of doing the same thing. When a BT passes on, it will sometimes give you likes in-game, indicating that it is pleased to finally be allowed to rest no longer stranded in solitude, and can finally venture to the mystery that is the afterlife. There is a great number of types of BTs in the world of Death Stranding, so let me elaborate on them. First is what we know as the regular BT or a gazer. These are the most common form of BT and generally manifest solely in areas of timefall. These BTs are named as such by their body language. Their humanoid form simply floats around gazing into the distance and never being able to actually see anything as these BTs locate their victims by sound. Sam is able to avoid these beings uh, by being extremely quiet and having to hold his breath at times when they are close. These BTs can range greatly in size and apparent age with some looking like adults, some children and other babies. Some gazers grow two to three times larger than a regular gazer and can actually be connected to a number of smaller ones. To defeat this BT, all the connected counterparts will have to be dealt with first. Why this BT variant exists in this fashion is unknown, but it's likely to be a result of it dying alongside others that it was closely connected to, who all died simultaneously. In areas that have suffered multiple void outs, uh, you are likely to encounter golden gazers. These BTs are slightly orange tinted and supposedly form from the high chirelium density in the area. Golden gazers are powerful enough that they don't require a catcher to trigger a void out even when dooms or repatriates are involved. A catcher as I have already mentioned are the main way for a void out to be triggered. They are far larger than the average BT and generally take on the forms of various creatures. Some appear like lions, others whales, some dolphins, and others are tentacled creatures. Each catcher's exterior form is comprised of a thick layer of tar that forms during a catcher event. This tar makes up their outer layer and conceals a core of antimatter within. Once the catcher has, well, captured you, it will consume you, and upon making contact with this core, will result in a void out. Catchers can be defeated by an exhaustive battle by using uh, repatriate hematic weaponry that will deplete your health severely and has really only ever been achieved by Sam or by escaping in haste by moving to the end of the tar belt that formed during the catcher event. If you can make it in time to the edge of this tar belt, then the catcher will dissipate and the BTs will be gone from the area for a short time. However, if one decides to battle the creature and win successfully, then the uh, catcher's tar and antimatter will begin to transform into crystallized chirelium, eventually breaking apart as the tar belt recedes. The chiral crystals float up into the atmosphere, leaving a few behind for harvest. 
There are two more notable BT types to talk about, and that being that they are much greater in danger level. The first of which is the Colossal. This beast really lives up to its name and is a humanoid gigantic BT featuring a fingered or tentacled head that houses a large amount of antimatter. The beast stands meters tall and is compared to small city buildings in stature. This entity has only ever been observed summoned by the character Higgs, so it's likely that this colossal BT is a creation by Higgs himself. Void outs generated by the Colossal are generally far more devastating than a regular one. As we see in the beginning of the game with Igor Frank succumbing to this very fate, it left a gigantic crater in the wake of the destruction. There is no running from this BT, as during the catcher phase of the Void Out, the Colossal is capable of locking the victim in the tar belt area through some unknown means. Finally, we come to the ultimate beached thing. What has come to be known as the Leviathan Class BT. Whilst it isn't the official designation in game, the title would seem to fit. This BT is the most powerful and dangerous form of BTs ever encountered in the world of Death Stranding. This stunning entity is capable of flight, and like the Colossal, is capable of locking victims in the battlefield. It takes the shape of some kind of elaborately patterned whale creature, and is even larger than the Colossal. This creature has a few special features that it can use to take down its victims, like the ability to shoot streams of chiral matter at the victim to weaken them, and in addition it can also fire golden gazer BTs like projectiles from its mouth, in order to trigger a void out without needing to consume its victim. However, if it is able to consume its victim, the result would likely be incredibly devastating. A void out that may result in the destruction of the scale of an entire section of coastline compared to what happened on the west coast. The BTs are now an inevitable way of life in the world of Death Stranding. Learning and adapting to live with these creatures is the only way forward for the people of Death Stranding. So knowing your foe will be very important in order to avoid the sixth extinction event. If you enjoyed this video then make sure to like, subscribe and hit the bell notification if you never want to miss out on another upload from Project Archivist. If you want to support the channel you can do so by becoming a channel member through the join button on the channel homepage. There is also a link in the description. And with that, that's all for today's video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one.